other members on the Republican side that don't want to have to actually record a vote in this. Am I incorrect on that? Is that the pressure you're getting is, Marjorie, don't do this because yeah. I don't want to have to vote on this. Is that where the pressure is coming no. from your colleagues? No, Steve, it's far nastier. It's far nastier. You wouldn't believe what's being talked about. Oh, we're going to get back at her. She's going to lose committee assignments next Congress. With, uh, she'll get primaried. We're going to come after her. This is going to be nasty. That's the little chitter chatter. That was Marjorie Taylor Greene on Steve Bannon's podcast, The War Room Podcast, and I have more from it to play for you. This comes after the list of demands from Marjorie Taylor Greene to Speaker of the House Mike Johnson uh, were leaked, and uh, she's very unhappy with the way, as you heard there, that she's being treated among the Republican Party because of her wild, unproductive, and anti-governance antics that we've been observing and discussing extensively. Now, I'll get to a bunch in this segment. This interview, some more of it, I'll give you the context, I'll give you the list of things she's demanding from Mike Johnson. I'll also show you a moment from Mike Johnson's press conference, and right before Marjorie Taylor Greene went in to talk with Mike Johnson, a clip from that as well. But the context is that Marjorie Taylor Greene, again, as we've been going over for some time, is demanding things from Mike Johnson with the threat of attempting to oust him looming over these conversations. Now, initially, she didn't make it seem like she was up for negotiations and she was just going to oust him. Now, it seems like she's saying, he can avoid me trying to oust him through calling this motion to vacate to a vote if he'll follow through on these four items that she wants, four concessions from Mike Johnson. And uh, so that's where things stand now. And Mike Johnson seems very fed up. Marjorie Taylor Greene, as you could tell, they're very distressed by the whole situation because it seems her party is turning on her and wants to punish her for the, again, unproductive behavior. And the Republican uh, sort of political prospect sinking behavior. This is going to hurt Republicans because it's yet another example that Americans can observe of the GOP really being horrible at being in the majority in the House of Representatives, especially when you contrast it against Democrats' governance. But before I go into the list itself, here is Marge Taylor Greene breaking it down on Steve Bannon's podcast. But here's the reality. Um, you know, I didn't give my demands out publicly, but somehow they've gotten leaked all over the press today. Uh, went in simply asking for four simple things. The, the easiest one that, that we can ask from our Republican elected speaker is that he obey the Hastert rule, which means no bills are brought to the floor unless the majority of the majority, which is the majority of Republicans, support it. My next request, no more funding for Ukraine. No funding for Ukraine, period. And fake prosecution against President Trump. And now the American people are being forced to pay for the Department of Justice and the special counsel, Jack Smith. I want it ended. I want the entire special counsel defunding, and I want it to end. That will never happen again. That will not be tolerated in our Republican conference. Here's what I want. Okay. If we don't get our 12 separate yeah. appropriation bills, we'll yeah. have to do a a one percent cut to to spending. So again, she has filed this motion to vacate Speaker of the House Mike Johnson, and she's going to call it to a vote soon. Uh, whatever that looks like and she's saying she won't have to do that if he gives these four things the haster rule being as she said the majority of the republican party would have to agree to something for it to even come to the floor for a vote no more funding for ukraine i've gone over lots and lots her hatred for ukraine and how it's both illogical and just strange and then her defund the special counsel request which is one of the most absurd things we've seen in American politics. A sitting congressperson trying to defund organizations concerned with enforcing the law for the sake of punishing them for daring to hold accountable a member of that person's party. And the precedent this would be setting is that those who are tasked with enforcing the law should be terrified to go after someone regardless of the behavior of that someone, if that person is a prominent and powerful person in a particular political party, at least in the GOP. And the message that's being sent here is don't go after Republicans 
even if there's justification for it, because we're going to punish you with the power that we have if you dare to do such a thing. So defund the police party apparently is the MAGA GOP. Uh, also, she's called for not in this list of four things, but just more broadly defunding the FBI and defunding the Department of Justice at large. Then she wants certain spending cuts as well. That seems to be the least important thing to her. Instead, it's protect Donald Trump at all costs and don't give aid to Ukraine. And then this Hastert rule trying to prevent certain things that she sees as too democratic uh, to come to the floor for a vote. So with that being said, here is Marjorie Taylor Greene, a little bit of her appearance outside of Mike Johnson's office before she went in to meet with him. You know, I wasn't going to talk about the things that I uh, had spoken with Speaker Johnson about, but since they actually got leaked, um, and I'm wondering, I don't know if it came out of his office or not. Um, yeah, I think I can talk about them. President Trump is our presidential candidate. He is being abused and the American people are fed up with it. It is absolutely the right thing to do to end the special counsel. These requests are not complicated and also demanding that we have a 1% cut in our budget is the right thing to do for the American people who are over $34 trillion in debt. This is not, these are not unreasonable requests. These are the right things to do. These are the right things to do for our conference. Yeah, and of course, when talking about budgetary matters, we remember that so often what contributes to the increase in the debt is the fact that Republicans just can't stop cutting taxes for the wealthy. Um, but there, I think about, I just want to circle back to how dangerous it would be for the Republican Party to set the precedent and engage in the behavior of politically uh, attacking and using their power to punish organizations and individuals who are supposed to enforce the law, but because they dared to do it with someone who is very powerful within the people at issues uh, party, they won't be able to do so because they're going to be defunded or the special counsel investigations are going to be unilaterally ended somehow by Congress. And that is some very dangerous anti rule of law behavior, which is what we have become very used to with this MAGA GOP. Then here is Mike Johnson getting asked about this particular ask from Marjorie Taylor Greene. And the question is, are you going to attempt to end this special counsel investigation into Donald Trump? Now, I'll remind you before you watch this, that Biden was also investigated by a special counsel, and this is a way to sort of separate, have another degree of separation between the administration, the Department of Justice, and then the special counsel, make it more independent. And it's wild for them to try to intervene in that process. And here's Mike Johnson trying to play it off as if we do try to do what Marjorie Taylor Greene's saying, it's because of other reasons that we were already thinking about. It's not because she's successful and making herself the speaker essentially but we know it's because he's caving trump will you do what marjorie taylor green is asking which is to defund the special counsel's investigation and the criminal case well look there's been a lot of discussion here amongst house republicans in particular for a long long time about the abuse of the special counsels I mean, this is a, a tradition that goes back about a quarter century uh, Janet Reno, I, I believe, is the one that originated this idea. And um, the problem that we have, see, Congress has an oversight responsibility, and we've got to make sure that the justice system is maintained well, and, and that's our, our job. We also have the power of the purse. And the problem with this, that, that many of us see with the special counsel um, a statute is that it goes outside of the regular appropriations process. It's, it's, sort, of a, it's sort of individually or self-funded. And so there's discussion this week, as there has been for a long, long time, about what is the most effective way for Congress to take the reins of that and ensure that the special counsels are not abusing the law themselves. And um, there's a lot of ideas about that. Um, discussions this week are nothing new, but we're looking very intently at it because I think the problem has reached a crescendo, I think, for all the reasons I just outlined here. I think there are serious questions on the part of the American people, and they want to know, they're asking us, uh, what we can do to ensure that the law is followed. And we're looking at every possible angle on that. And stay tuned, we'll, we'll find out. Second. Yeah, so he can say as many times as he'd like that this has nothing to do with uh, Margella Green's request, okay? He's not caving to her. She's not bossing him around as if she's the most powerful person in Congress. This is something he's been thinking about for a long time, he swears. 
and he just might do it but it's because he wanted to do it because he's the big strong guy uh and it's sad to see him caving like this and it's dangerous like i said for them to be trying to unite around an effort to go after special counsels just because they dare to hold trump legally accountable and i will say this is yet another example of the projection the allegations from some of these republicans actually being confessions where they've been accusing president joe biden of engaging in a witch hunt against trump while they're engaging in this political witch hunt against biden with these ridiculous baseless allegations that they're using to justify these ridiculous investigations or here they accuse biden of weaponizing his position of power for political purposes to go after his political enemies but then they're openly admitting they want to weaponize their positions of power uh to go after their political enemies and the enemies of their political ally donald trump and it's really unfortunate that that's the situation we're in because in a more logical world similar to how whenever the classified documents situation came up with president biden essentially universally across the left people said hey if there's wrongdoing there hold him accountable if not if because he uh, gave over these documents right when they were found and there isn't criminal wrongdoing then don't prosecute him if there is criminal wrongdoing the prosecutor and in that case played itself out there wasn't criminal wrongdoing so then he wasn't prosecuted and then henry cuellar gets indicted that looks pretty damning and almost every single democrat wants that process to play out if process or if uh if a conviction is justified then that should be the conclusion it's just not complicated we want the rule of law to play out as it should regardless of the political identification of somebody but that's not how republicans are handling the trump situation because it's not about principle it's about politics i'll leave it there let me know what you thought of all that in the comments